Hi guys and welcome back to another makeup and true crime video. If you're new here, my name is Zara and I post beauty content and makeup and true crime videos. So if you enjoy these videos, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see next and make sure to subscribe. It would really mean so much to me. So today's case is one that I really haven't seen much coverage on. I don't think the bigger makeup and true crime YouTubers have covered this one. Like I don't think Daniel Kirsty or Bailey Sarian have covered this one. So this one was really interesting to me and really sad, but hopefully a lot of you guys haven't heard about this case before and it's definitely an interesting one and there's not a ton of information out about it yet. So let's just get into today's case. Okay, so like I mentioned before, there's not much information about this couple but today's story is based on Liang Zhao and Ming Ming Chen, and they ran a decently popular restaurant with loyal customers, but it's hard to find information about them or anyone that knew them really well. So Liang was the father and he spent around 20 years in the US and some of that time was spent in New York, but he was from Ohio. On his Facebook profile, Liang actually listed Queens, New York as his hometown. Ming Ming was the mother and she applied for asylum in the United States in the year 2009. She said she was formerly an elementary school teacher in China but she faced persecution because she practiced Falun Gong, which is a faith that mixes traditional Chinese religion and medicine with Buddhist values, I guess. And she actually left China because of this. And she told immigration officials that she left China in 2008 and paid a snakehead, which is a human smuggler, $68,000 to sneak her into the United States which is like a crazy, crazy amount of money. Like it makes sense to pay that much, but at the same time, I didn't think that these people who were so desperate for asylum would have that kind of money. Like it's, it's insane. So two months after flying from China to Mexico, she then crossed the US border hidden inside a vehicle. Someone then drove her to New York where she met an uncle who then brought her to Ohio. Ling Ling and Ming, Ling Ling, oh my God. Liang and Ming Ming actually met when she was working for Liang's sister's restaurant in New York. And Liang was actually helping his sister at the time at her restaurant because her delivery driver had an accident. So it is believed that Liang and Ming Ming married in March, 2010. And they actually had their first child, a daughter called Jojo in October of that year, 2010. And they had her in New York City. And in June, 2011, Liang decided to open up his own restaurant called Ang's Asian Cuisine. And it was at the Gander Mountain Plaza in Ohio. And Liang and his father had actually run a restaurant in that same plaza for about 11 years. But Liang decided to change up the name and start fresh hoping for better business. In December, 2011, they actually gave birth to their second daughter and they named her Ashley. And she was also born in Brooklyn, New York. So I'm guessing they went back to New York every time they gave birth, which is weird, I wonder why. But they found it really difficult to raise their first daughter and run this restaurant and they couldn't cope with it. So they decided to send their youngest daughter, Ashley, to China to live with Liang's mother. So Ashley was raised by her grandmother till she was four, and then she moved back to the US to live with Liang and Ming Ming around the age of four. So running any business is a challenge, but running a restaurant is like a real challenge. Regular customers said that Ming Ming and Liang were the only employees of this business, which ran six days a week. And during the course of running this restaurant, Liang would always post on Facebook how the restaurant would be closed because his wife or his daughter were ill. These Facebook posts are so weird. I'll try and put some of the screenshots up here now. It just seemed like the restaurant was always closed and he was always updating people on why the restaurant wouldn't be open today. Friends Friends of their oldest daughter Jojo's parents would always say how Liang and Ming Ming were so busy that they could never take the kids on play dates. So they would bring their kids to the restaurant so that the girls could play together. They said Liang seemed to be a loving father and the girls were definitely daddy's girls. Customers stated that they looked like just a good, hardworking young family. And they also stated how difficult it must have been for them to run this business while having small children and how bored the girls must be. Did it really start raining? Really? It's like pouring. Hope you guys can't hear that. Every time I try that concealer technique where you leave the gap in the middle, I always have to go in with more concealer because it just doesn't cover. Customers said that Ashley and her older sister were always at the restaurant 
playing either on their iPad or coloring or drawing. So on 9th January 2017, Liang ends up calling 911 to report his five-year-old daughter Ashley missing. He states that they cannot find their daughter anywhere and that she had been sleeping at the restaurant while they were working and they actually hadn't seen her for four to five hours and they said she was sleeping near the back door and maybe she wandered off into the woods surrounding the plaza. So I'll play the 911 call now. Jackson Township, please. Hi, yes, uh, I need some help. Okay, where are you at? Uh, 4924 Portage Street. 4924 Portage? Yeah. Hey, what's going on? I, I can't find my daughter. Okay, how old is she? Uh, five. She just turned five. Sugar, stop it. Okay, and you're at Ang's? Ang's, yeah. Quiet. When's the last time you seen her? Uh, uh, this afternoon, probably. Around what time? Uh, three, maybe four. Five. So you haven't five? seen her in five hours? You saw her in five? What was she wearing? Oh, okay. What? What was she wearing? Uh, she's wearing a purple winter coat. Uh, I, I don't know what those things are called, but they're not jeans. They're like, um... Like leggings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What color were they? Uh, grayish. Okay, and you haven't seen her in five hours? About, yeah. I I mean, she was there sleeping, I, I mean, you know. Where was she sleeping at? In the restaurant? Yeah, yeah. She, she was sleeping there, and I picked up my older daughter from school. We all saw her sleeping there. So, and, you know, we went to work, and, you know, we let her sleep. We, and we got busy, and then uh, uh, after it got busy, you know, we started cleaning up. And, and then, you know, we opened the door to... And she's not here. Hold on one second, okay? So the police ended up coming to search the restaurant. And when they came in, they noticed that the restaurant didn't have any security cameras. So they ended up searching the entire restaurant. They searched the surrounding businesses and the entire plaza. And then they even searched the wooded area at the back of the restaurant. But they found nothing. Then they decided that the restaurant needed a more thorough searching. So they ended up covering the front of the restaurant and all the windows with paper so that they could privately search the restaurant. And they wanted to search every square inch of the restaurant because they believed maybe little Ashley climbed into one of the ovens or something like that and she may have gotten stuck. And at 5 p.m. on 10th January 2017, investigators found Ashley's dead body inside a salt container stuffed inside the walls of the restaurant above the walk-in freezer. Okay, so back to that 911 call. If you guys found it weird, yeah, duh. How can a father be so calm knowing his five-year-old daughter is missing? If my child was missing for even a minute, I would be panicking. This whole 911 call is so strange and almost sounds like he's just reporting like a lost shoe. Like, yeah, officer, I put my shoes down here and then I left. And then when I came back, my shoe wasn't there anymore, guys. Like, that's literally what it sounds like to me. So the police take Liang and Ming Ming in for questioning. And when questioning Ming Ming, she just keeps denying that she's hurt her daughter. But the investigators can tell that she's lying. She shows no emotion that her daughter is dead. And so they keep questioning her and keep questioning her. And then finally, she confesses to killing Ashley. So the investigators ask Ming Ming, like, what happened? And Ming Ming just simply states, I just killed her and she died. And the investigator asks, did you hit her? And Ming Ming sort of looks annoyed by this. Like, yeah, I hit her. How else do you kill someone? And she says, I hit her using my hand. And then I told my husband, go take care of it. And then she goes on to state how she has to take care of everything in the restaurant. And she states, you know, I only have two hands. I'm not four hands, girl. I have two hands. She says she didn't want to do that to Ashley, but sometimes you can't help yourself. I only take care of everything from the restaurant. I only have two hands. I'm not four hands, girl. I'm two hands. Ming Ming's whole interview just pisses me off. She literally sounds like the police are bothering her by asking her a question as to where her daughter is. Like, ugh, why are we even talking about Ashley? Do you know how busy I am at the restaurant, guys? The detectives then tell her, you know, you're not even crying that your daughter is dead, Ming Ming. And she says, I'm not crying because I just don't have any waters left. It's unbelievable to think that this woman ended up having two children. And I can't even imagine how those two girls were treated. Like, I hope they received some love from one of their parents, you know. 
So then Liang was interviewed and then this is what he states happened on the day he made that 911 call. Liang states that on that day he woke up and he took his eldest daughter Jojo to school and then when he returned home he saw that his wife was really angry with Ashley and here's why. Because Ashley peed and pooped in her diaper. That's what a diaper is there for, duh. He states, I know it doesn't sound like a big deal, but Ashley is five years old and she still isn't potty trained. Well, whose fault is that? So he states that that got Ming Ming angry and she began to yell at Ashley. And this was all happening in the living room of their home. And she was telling Ashley, you're too old to be wearing a diaper. You should be potty trained by now. And then Ashley ended up removing her diaper and that got Ming Ming even angrier. So she ended up taking Ashley's head and slamming it against the carpet twice. And Liang states that he saw this happening, but he thought everything was fine. He said that Ashley was still breathing and he thought she was just going to come out of it. He then states that Ashley was actually gasping for breath, almost like a snoring sound, but then the snoring stopped and he didn't hear the heavy breaths anymore. So he still didn't think anything was wrong and he didn't pay any attention to it. Then a little while later, he goes to check on her and he wants to hold her but he said that she just didn't feel right. And so he then ended up checking her heart and he realized that it had stopped beating. And he stated he tried CPR for around 15 minutes or so, but it didn't work. And then he states that if he had only started CPR right when she had started that gasping for breath and heavy breathing, perhaps Ashley would still be alive today. He states that when he realized she was dead, they both just started panicking and they didn't know what to do. He then corrects himself and says that they actually ended up taking Ashley to the bathroom after Ming Ming, you know, slammed her head on the ground because she began vomiting and they then rinsed her off in the bath, but then she started vomiting green stuff again. So then they ended up cleaning her up, changing her into new clothes, and then they kept her there. And that was when after a few minutes, he went to check on her and realized that she had stopped breathing, which doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, so the mom gets mad, bashes the little girl's head on the floor. I'm guessing that's when Ashley began to vomit and gasp for breath. So they take her to the bathroom, clean her off, all while she's vomiting and green stuff is coming out of her, dress her up and then put her there. Where's there? On a chair? On a bed? He states this took around five to ten minutes and then he ended up checking on her. You don't check on your child immediately after someone slams her head into the ground? Oh my God, you guys, I ended up doing the rest of my makeup, telling you the rest of the story, and then I went and checked back the audio and it didn't record anything. So that's fun. But anyway, all I did was add a glitter liner on top of my brown liner. I just used the Urban Decay Midnight Cowboy and then I just added on a pair of lashes and I was up to my blush. So I'll continue with the story. Okay, so I don't believe Liang's story for one second. So he states that the first thing they think of when they realize their daughter Ashley had passed away was how he was going to lose the rest of his family now, how he was gonna lose his older daughter Jojo and how his family is now just gonna fall apart. Didn't it already fall apart that the fact that your five-year-old daughter died? What an asshole. He's definitely only concerned about himself and his wife. He literally shows zero concern for Ashley. He says what happened next is that they decide to take Ashley's body to the restaurant and lay her in the bed upstairs so that when their eldest daughter Jojo came back from school, she would see Ashley's body in the bed and Ashley would be sleeping. And that way Jojo witnessed Ashley sleeping so that later on when he went to make the 911 call, all their stories matched. So he says he then takes Ashley's dead body, puts her into her car seat in the car, drives to the restaurant, carries her into the restaurant and then lays her in the bed. He says they then worked at the restaurant all day while Ashley lay dead upstairs. Then Jojo returns from school, sees Ashley sleeping in bed. Once that was done, Liang takes Ashley's body and hides her in this big plastic salt container inside the walls above the restaurant's walk-in freezer. Ashley was laying in the bed from 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. That's over eight hours. Poor Ashley was just laying in that bed alone. He says the reason why he put Ashley in that plastic salt container was so that she wouldn't stink. He also says that he didn't know they were going to be questioned so soon after reporting Ashley missing. He said that in the process of reporting her missing, 
they were going to take Ashley's body and dispose of it. He says he was planning to dispose of Ashley's body and then just be that family whose child went missing and was never found. This is what he said he was going to do. He was going to burn it, bury it, or throw it in the ocean. He says that with all three options, there were chances that they could be caught. For example, burning it could result in someone questioning as to why they were burning something so large. The ocean route could result in the body washing ashore. And burying it could result in an animal digging it up. He's calling his little five-year-old daughter's body it. Honestly, the way he talks about this is so carefree. He's just talking about how he could save the situation and save Ming, really. He then goes on to state how Ming Ming is not a bad person and he never would have married her if he believed her to be an abusive person. That she never abused their daughters physically out of anger, but she may have smacked them a couple times, but that she's a good, good person. He then goes on to tell the detectives that Ming Ming and himself didn't actually raise Ashley, that they sent Ashley to China to live with Liang's mother, so Ashley's grandmother, and that his mother was raising Ashley and Ashley had only been with them for around a year. He states that the first time that he saw Ming Ming sort of behave this way towards Ashley was because his mother had been telling Ming Ming that she wasn't raising Ashley right. And this really got to Ming Ming. And he states that Ashley, even though she was five years old, she didn't know her last name, she didn't know whether she was a boy or a girl, and she wasn't potty trained. This apparently irritated Ming Ming, and coupled with the fact that the grandmother would say that Ming Ming was not raising Ashley right, caused Ming Ming to snap. He states that Ming Ming began abusing Ashley one month into Ashley's return from China, when she was just four years old. And then this doesn't make any sense, because doesn't this just contradict everything he said before about Ming Ming being a good person? Like, what are you talking about? So then what I don't get is, why have more children? If you know it's difficult to run a business and take care of children, why have more children? Ashley was better off just living with her grandmother, who seemed to love her and treat her right. It also seems that Ashley perhaps may have had a learning disorder or some learning difficulties, because Liang's states that they tried over and over again to teach Ashley how to be potty trained and to teach her, you know, that she was a girl and not a boy. And, and who knows, maybe that's what Ashley's grandmother meant when she was telling Ming Ming that she wasn't raising Ashley right. Maybe she was trying to tell them, you know, clearly this little girl has some learning difficulties. You need to change your parenting, I guess. Maybe that's what she was trying to explain to Ming Ming, but Ming Ming was just getting more and more frustrated and you know, that she was getting called out, basically. The investigators go on to question Liang as to why they sent Ashley to live with his his mother. And Liang states the reason for that was because of the restaurant. It was too difficult to do both, to run the restaurant and take care of two children. And he does state that he asked his mother to come down from China and stay in the US to look after the children, but his mother declined. He then goes on and on about this potty training and how this really bothered Ming Ming and how that really set her off that day. And that Ming Ming, you know, snapped and caused her to do that to her own daughter. Liang and Ming Ming were both arrested and charged with murder, two counts of endangering a child, tampering with evidence, obstructing justice, and gross abuse of a corpse. Ming Ming took a plea deal which turned her murder charge into an involuntary manslaughter charge and she was sentenced to 22 years in jail, following which she will be deported back to China because she was never legally a US citizen. The judge actually stated, and you could see the judge was really upset about this case. She stated that there was a void of love, absence of protection, presence of anger, and horror of being beaten by her own mother. And the judge stated she uses the word mother with great pain because calling Ming Ming a mother was insulting to other mothers. She also stated that a sentence of 100 years would not be enough for Ming Ming's crime. Liang ended up taking a plea deal too and his murder charge was also dropped as he testified against his wife and he was sentenced to 12 years in prison. 
Their daughter, Jojo, was placed in the custody of the state. What a horrible, horrible story and what a horrible couple. Honestly, looking at their pictures makes me so angry. And to think not only did they harm their innocent child, but because they thought, you know, they didn't have any connection with her because they didn't raise her, they both didn't have any emotion about her tragic death and they didn't really seem to care about it. They seemed to care more about protecting what they had left as a family as opposed to what poor Ashley went through. That is the end of today's case. I'm sorry that my audio cut off and just wasn't the right flow, but I hope you guys still found this story interesting. If you guys have heard of this story before, let me know in the comments below. Where did you hear about it? I'm pretty sure I read it on like Daily Mail or something like a long time ago. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching guys. If you want to check out some of my other true crime videos, click over here above this beautiful purple light <laughs> And make sure to like the video and please subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you join the fam. And I will see you in my next one, guys. Besitos. Mwah. Bye.